Are you kidding me? Oh yeah, this is gonna be good. Hey friends, hey, welcome back to the Expeditionary Johnny channel. Hey, if you're new to my uh, channel, uh, you might notice the theme for my channel is removing obstacles to get outdoors. That could be dealing with time, ideas, and possibly equipment. And today's video kind of covers all three of those. So I had to stay near the house today because of uh, family affairs. So I decided to run around the uh, back out here in my woods to do a little bit of playing around. And I've got a very special recipe that I want to try. So I'm going to be trying something new for some uh, backpacking and camping. And uh, then I'm going to show you the type of equipment that I like to use. So uh, let's keep on going into the woods and uh, we'll visit for a while. As you can tell, <laughs> I've got quite a bit of deadfall out here, so I got plenty of wood to burn and play around with. All right, let's keep on heading back here. All right, so here we are back out of my uh, little base camp here on my uh, back property. This is where I like to experiment with different ideas. Uh, today, we're gonna be making backpacking crab cakes. So if you uh, check out through my little uh, meal list, you'll notice I like to dehydrate everything. All right, so I've got here some dehydrated imitation crab meat. So this is backpacking meal. So I'm not gonna dehydrate really good quality crab meat. I'm gonna go with the imitation stuff. Uh, it's still gonna have really good flavor. So the first thing I need to do for this meal is get this reconstituted. I'm gonna start with some cold water and we'll see how it acts. If we have to apply heat, we'll do that. All right, so you can see I'm using these deli style containers today. I've been experimenting with those. Uh, I've taken a real liking to them. Just maybe it's because of the consistency, the size, they're lightweight, they seal up really well. So we're gonna let this soak for a little bit and then we're gonna move on to the topic of fire. But I wanna talk a little bit about why so many people in the survival community like the flint and steel idea. All right, so why all the interest in flint and steel uh, within the survival community? Well, it really comes down to resources. Uh, everybody wants to have a backup plan in case they run out of materials that they bring with them. You know, your Vaseline cotton balls, your lighters, uh, your ferro rods. What happens if all of that is gone? Then so they, they still want another backup plan. And they like the idea of flint and steel because if you go out around, let's say, a creek someplace uh, or out a, in a rocky path, you might find some good shirt, like right, right here. So... This piece I got from Mike Reed out there in Virginia. Um, here is some chert that I picked up down in Kansas when I was at Kit Tibbetts uh, KT Wilderness Gathering, which will be next month, coming up here in May. Uh, so you can get this off the la uh, land, and if you have a good striker or a 90 degree spine on a hardened steel knife, you can create sparks with that. So. Let's go on back up to the campsite. Let's get a fire going. All right, so let's talk, take a minute to talk about the gear that we're using. All right, today I'm using the Firebox stove. This by far is my favorite stove because why? It takes up no weight or no room in my backpack and it's pretty darn light. So uh, let's just get it out of the bag. You guys have seen me do this before. It's got these two little pins you pull out like so. And then it opens up like a book. If I open the right way, and then this ash pan comes off. Firebox opens like that, and then you can see the bottom just stripes right on down, and next thing you know, you got a fully functioning stove. All right, so let's gather up a few twigs and let's get our fire going. All right, so it's time to get a fire. I did a bad though, I forgot to bring my striker, so I'm gonna have to improvise on this video. All right, so I've got a bird's nest that I've gathered up here in my little haversack and I've got some char material here's the thing with flint and steel you need some char material to get your uh, fire going okay so here this is some old punk wood that I threw in an Altoids container I threw that on a fire charred that one up 
and then here's a bunch of uh, cotton that I made some char cloth. All right, so the idea for the survivalist that is running out in the woods with their knife, they're gonna take their shirt and they're gonna bang it against the knife to create sparks. Now you gotta have the right knife and you gotta be kind of practiced at that. I'm not. <laughs> so I'm gonna go with what I my go-to is. All right, so you've seen this time and time again. This little keychain ferrule rod throws way hotter sparks than you can from a flint and steel kit. And so you're gonna be, have a lot easier time getting your fire going. Because some, as this char material, some of it's harder to light than others. So I want something nice and hot and I want to get her going. So let me go ahead and show you. So for me, Right away, you can see this one lit up, and that this wind is actually going to help my fire. Ooh, that's hot. I'm just going to close this up. I got a lot of char lit there. You can see I got plenty of going here. And guess what? Now it's just like a bow drill. Alright. So this is why I for anybody who wants to learn how to do bow drill, I would definitely recommend learning how to work with char material to get your fire going. You see this thing's gonna turn into flame without me even blowing on it because I got plenty from the wind here. And I'm just gonna stuff that in our firebox stove and we're gonna have a fire. Well, maybe I will blow on it because it's going to take a second. Come on. Oh, don't need to blow on it. Woo! Hot, hot, hot. All right, so you can see the uh, firebox stove took off just fine with that bird's nest material. Uh, so I'm just gonna keep that fire going. So let's check on our food. Our imitation crab meat is coming back nicely. See these big old pieces of meat here? It's softened up quite a bit. So I don't think I'm gonna have to apply any heat to it until we're actually making the patties. So let's turn our attention to binding up and making our crab cakes. So what I, what I have here is some uh, powdered eggs. All right, so this is about one eighth cup of uh, powdered eggs. And I'm gonna about add about an eighth cup of water to make one egg. We'll just zip it up and we'll mix it up. And we're gonna let it set for a little bit. And then we're gonna mix that together with our uh, crab and some breadcrumbs and some seasoning. And we're gonna start making some crab cakes. All right, so I need to season up my binder. So I'm gonna take a packet of mayonnaise and add that to our egg. So I'm also gonna take some of the sweet and spicy dado gator spice that I got when I was in uh, uh, St. Augustine, Florida here this last month or so. it all up. All right, so now we're going to take our uh, rehydrated, reconstituted imitation crab meat and we're going to add our uh, egg mixture to it. So I've got my crab mixture. I'm going to add some breadcrumbs to this. That might be a bit much. Okay, so let's start making a couple patties. So I've got my uh, Tom Garvey, the keto cook, 
olive oil here and we're going to put a little bit of that in our uh, pan. I've got to form the, normally I would heat up the pan with the oil but I got to make these patties here and I'm outside so I figure this is the cleanest way I can do it. I've already wiped my hands down here so I'm going to go ahead stir this up a little bit more and I'm going to start forming a couple patties. I'll put them in the pan and we're going to put them on the firebox and we're going to cook them up and let's see how it comes out. How does that look? Put that in the pan. <laughs> All right, patty number two. Let's clean our hands. Flame's a little too hot for that one. That's okay. Oh yeah. Are you kidding me? Oh yeah, this is going to be good. I'm just going to let that burn out. All right, so what's a crab cake with a lot of, without a little bit of tartar sauce? All right, so we're going to make some backpacking tartar sauce. A couple packets of mayonnaise. A, a bit of ground mustard, okay? You can, or you can use the little mustard packs, or you can break this up. But remember, we're just trying this out. This is something for backpacking. A little bit of dried chives. Hot sauce. Because I think it works a little bit of olive oil. Needs more mustard. And with a sweet and some spicy sauce. Here we go. Now we got something to work with. Let's try our crab cake. Okay, so we have two crab cakes. And uh, my honey bunny's coming home soon, so how about I eat the, um, I'm going to try the one that's a little crusty there. And save the nice, pretty one for my wife here. So let's see how we do it. Oh, hell. 
might have to tweak the heat, but man. Yeah. You kidding me? I think we're on to something good here. Mm. That's good. All right, folks, there we have it. Backpacking crab cakes. Who knew, right? All right, all made possible by our, friend, our dehydrator, the, our friends at the firebox stove, Tom Garvey, the keto cook. Hey, it's like, guys, I hope this inspires you. You are only limited by your imagination, all right? I got this idea from Jacques Pepin. He was cooking up for in his kitchen, but I was like, you know what? I can come up with a backpacking version of that. So I'll let your imaginations go wild. You can see right here, even though I didn't have time to go for a long backpack trip, I did have enough time to run out in the woods and experiment on a new meal. So. I'm definitely going to be doing this one again. I'll learn to pack it up smaller to make it actually more practical. But now that we know we got a winning recipe, I think we got something, a winner here. All right, so appreciate y'all tuning in. Y'all take care and uh, have a great week. Mm -hmm.